Okay, so this is Bernie now, if you haven't seen him in a little while. And Bernie is here to help us change our oil again. How to change your oil on your CRF 450L, if you didn't already know how. So part one is going to be just going over how to change your oil and it's going to be specific to my bike because I have an AXP skid plate. Part two, if you want to skip ahead to it, is we're going to talk about the oil analysis that we've been doing. Um, I'm actually changing the oil with only 450 or so miles on it, 150 miles short of what it needs to be, just to see uh, what the fuel content of the oil is now if there's any difference and then you know the next oil change will we'll do whatever we'll go to normal length but just so you know I'm changing the oil a little bit early at some point I'm going to put all the oil analysis together and we'll we'll have a whole video on nothing but that so again part one is how to change your oil part two is oil analysis all right what you need to change your oil on my bike the only thing I need is an 8 millimeter socket. Um, if you're pulling off the stock skid plate, you're going to need, I forget what you need. You're going to need your 10 millimeter Allen wrench, a funnel. I use the uh, Works Connection oil drain because it's amazing. Um, I also use K&N oil filters. Anybody who's interested, it's the KN 116. And this is the oil filter cover o-ring which we may or may not use need oil obviously i like motul's 300v their factory line the 1040 weight um, you can use any 1040 weight you want to right it's, who's better chevy or ford toyota or nissan <laughs> Whatever oil you want to get. I use Motul because it's this crazy green color and it's really cool. You're going to need something to drain your oil into, either like a drain bucket or I just, I keep these spare one gallon jugs. Whenever I have them, I put the oil in that. It just makes transporting it to the landfill so much easier. Um, so those things are going to be necessary. Optional, you're going to need some grease. Um, I shouldn't say that your torque wrench is optional <laughs> because I've seen a lot of people screw up their drain plug because they think the plug itself needs to be tight to keep everything from leaking out. Not true. Not true. Your drain plug uses an o-ring seal. Um, you could put that in with no force and as long as it didn't fall out it would never leak. Um, and then uh, I'm going to put um, here's our oil analysis catch can, that's totally optional. Here's another thing that should not be optional, is your owner's manual, but let's be honest, right? You're watching a YouTube video to help you change your oil. You're probably not the kind of person to go out and get their manual and actually read it. <laughs> that's, that was funny. I made myself laugh. What about you, Mo? Is that funny? Marley doesn't think anything's funny. How about you, Bernie? Is that funny? <laughs> All right, I'm the only one who thought that was funny. All right, let's, let's get to changing your oil. Step one is to run your bike for about three minutes and uh, get the oil warmed up and, and splashed around your engine. Uh, and then step two is to let your oil cool back down for three or four minutes. Uh, you shouldn't be scalding yourself when you're changing your oil, but you don't want it to come out like hot. Okay, so that's step one and two. I'm gonna to totally screw up the steps on this. Before you do anything, bike. step one, knock your bike over. Make sure your uh, fill tube vent is sticking up in the air. Okay, we're gonna grab our Eight millimeter T handle, and while it's laying on its side, we're going to change the uh, the oil filter. There we go. 
All right, again, eight millimeter. Got a long screw and a short screw. You can try to screw them up, but it won't work. It won't let you screw them up. So the short one's on top, long one's on the bottom. Set that over there, and then your cover just kind of wiggles out. There you go. Now you see the O-ring? That's the O-ring we're going to check and replace if it looks at all hinky. Uh, this one actually looks pretty good. The thing that destroys O-rings when you put your filter in is this edge right here. So when you put it in and you feel the O-ring hit, just ease up. Here's your filter, and I have a magnet on mine. So when I pull it out, it comes out. Now there's a spring on the end of this. You're not going to be able to see it. I'll fish that out for you. So there's a spring, and the spring fits just like a so. Canon filter, here are the screws. I'm running out of room to put stuff. Oh. Okay, so there's two sides of this, right? There's one side with a rubber um, o-ring or gasket on it, and then the other side is uh, just bottomless. This is the side that the spring goes on, because your oil flows, this is the cap, flows through here and out here, and it needs to get into the filter. Right, so that's kind of what it looks like. Now, because I'm trying to put this on, lay, oh, and, and the magnet just goes wherever you want to put it. All right, I just center it right there. So the spring goes on here, and in order to drop that in, it'll always fall out. Whoop, just like that. <laughs> okay, so if I put it in here and put it upside down, right, the spring will just fall out. So what I do is, and this is in the manual, so don't yell at me, Take my grease gun. Oh wow, it's got some dog hair on the end of it for some reason. I'll put some grease on the end of this puppy, just a little bit, just enough to glue the spring in the end. Right now, this now your spring won't fall out. And then I'll put this on here, and then I'll drop the whole thing in gently. Remember, you don't want to mess that O-ring up as you put it down in. And this will only go on one way. So if you have the, the cap, or I'm sorry, the oil filter cover the wrong direction, it, uh, the holes won't line up. There we go. Just wiggle it on nice and easy. No drama. Short one on top. Long one on the bottom. Right, and these two get torqued to seven, which is not a whole lot of force. It's just snug. And there you go. So that's the, uh, that's how you change the filter side of things. You can obviously also do this with the bike standing up. <laughs> Next, we're going to take our 10 millimeter. We're going to find our drain, which is right there. I'm going to pop that open. Now, if you had been, if you're using um, the stock skid plate, step one for you is to pull that skid plate off, obviously. All right, so we're going to pull the drain plug out. If it takes any kind of force to get this out, you, uh, you screwed something up. I check that O-ring. That is what actually seals Right? It's that O-ring. It's, it's, it's no contact up here. It's this O-ring. Now set that aside. Step two for me is I'm going to take my little works plug and to make sure it's shut. And I'm just going to screw it on in the oil drain hole. Next step. All right. I don't think this is necessary, but I'm going to drain off the first little bit into the jug. And on this, all I'm going to do is pop that. Oh, it was going to come out. Slow. There it goes. And I'm going to stop it. 
just in case anything was sitting really, really low in the engine. It shouldn't have been, but who knows. And I'm going to take our sample. Fill it up to the line. And there you can see it. It says, right now it's this normal green color instead of the alien alien blood green color it is when it's brand new. So for everyone else who has to take their stock skid plate off, this is what it looks like. Um, of course, if you do have a Works Connection Easy Oil Drain System, you can still use it, and I recommend it. Uh, because you'll see when I pop the drain off here, oil just comes out everywhere. And it's just an easier way to control it. But, that being said, the next most important part, no matter how you drain it, is to make sure your bike is level. And then you're going to rock your bike back and forth. And... That's going to get the oil to drain out of uh, some other chambers and, and whatnot in your oil pan. So don't forget to do that. Keep rocking it back and forth until oil stops coming out. So our O-ring on this is, looks fine. I'm going to clean it up just a little bit so I don't get any dirt in there. And again, this is actually easier without a uh, skid plate on there. But I had the stock one for a while. It was horrible taking on it on and off. All right, so here I just bottomed out. This gets torqued. All right, I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> okay, I'm not. Anything more than two fingers is too much. All right, there you go. Oh, look at that. I made a clean spot. I might have to wash my bike at some point now. So the filters changed. The um, drain plug is back in. We're going to stand it up and we're going to put some oil in this thing. Oop, clean this cap off. All right. And your CRF 450L is going to take, oh, give or take, it's like 1.2 quarts or 1.1 liters. Uh, again, give or take, there's a little bit of fudge in your dipstick. I would go for more is less, but. <laughs> I would go for an overfill rather than an underfill. Um, let's go grab. So we're going to put the funnel in here. Get a funnel that fits. This one actually works really nice. It fits in there, and if I give it like just a little bit of a turn, it's actually in there pretty good. I don't think the color of this ever turns out. It never shows up on film. Maybe if I get it right in the sunlight. This Motul stuff is crazy. So here we're going to dump a liter in. And again, I use Motul. Read the manual. <laughs> um, if, you, if you can't decide what kind or what type of oil or any of that stuff, just go with the Honda Pro. And a tenth more of what we just put in. It's really not a lot of oil. Okay. Which is why, why I think you have to change it every 600 miles, right? Because there's just not a whole lot of oil in there. All right. Now, don't forget there's an O-ring on here, too. Anytime you see an O-ring, look at it. Make sure it's all there. It's not all roughed up. It's not missing any chunks. It's not squashed. We're going to put the dipstick back in. We're going to start the bike up and let the oil circulate, fill up the oil filter, get all the way back to the motor. Okay, 
here's the next tricky bit is to check your oil your bike has to be level straight up and down straight back and forth so what I'm gonna do is just to make life easier I'm gonna put a block under my kickstand that's that's pretty close I like it so right the bike is level this way it's now almost level this way we're gonna pull the dipstick out We're going to pull the dipstick out, clean it off, and are you, are you listening? This is an important part. With the bike perfectly level, which is right about there, I'm going to set the dipstick in. I'm not going to screw it in, and then I'm going to pull it out. Oh, can you see it? I hope it comes out. It's right at the end of my fingertip. That's, uh, that's pretty much money right there. All right, so that's kind of the last step. After that, you're allowed to screw it in. Um, if it weren't right, here, let's pretend it's not. Let's pretend it's not. I can add a little bit more. All right, if I drop it in, don't turn it. All right, take it right back out and look. <laughs> So I want you to see, just so you see why I say it's so important that the bike is level. Here it is. See where the level is? It's right here. Right there's a the level. Okay. And that's with the bike just tipped over towards me, just a hair. Here I am hanging on to the hand grips, but just barely. It's like the bike is wobbling back and forth. Either way. And I'm going to put it in and set it in. I'm not going to screw it, and now we're going to look at the level. And you can you see it? It's right there. So that's the difference, just being off a couple of inches on the lean on the bike. Um, if you take the level with it on its kickstand, I guarantee you're only going to have half the fluid in there that you need to have. Okay, so that's really important. Now, if it was low, all we would do would be put the funnel back in drip some more in, pull the funnel out, and do that again until it was until it was right where you wanted it to be. And that's how you change the oil in your uh, CRF 450L. It probably takes all of 10 minutes once you're used to it, once you get all the tools and you know where everything is. Um, I'm definitely planning on doing some trips where I'm going to have to stop and change the oil in the middle of the trip. Uh, again, every 600 miles, um, I've pushed it to 1,000 and more. We're going to try to keep it at 1,000 miles or so. So there are going to be trips where I have to change the oil into the trip. Uh, and you can see how few tools it takes. So most of that stuff, other than maybe the uh, works connection train thing, it's all in your toolkit anyhow. All right, so thanks for watching part one. Part two is coming right up and we're gonna talk about our oil analysis and, and my thoughts on it and what the next step is. This will be the third oil analysis. Will it be the fourth? <laughs> I can't remember. Um, that I've done on the bike. And I think I did one at like 1400 miles, 600 miles, etc. This one's gonna be at 450 miles and one of the things I can tell you is when I was changing the oil, it smells a little bit like gasoline, but not horribly bad. I've, it's been much worse. So we'll see what they say. Um, I'm getting the kits through Amps Oil, but it's actually at a company called Oil Analyzers, and it comes with all that stuff. You pay about, I don't know, 40 bucks. Um, you do your sample. There's an online thing where you go on and you fill out all the... Uh, information about the oil and your bike and and what you want analyzed and then you all this stuff right goes in here and it just gets mailed back it's pre-labeled so you don't have to do anything uh, the other company is blackstone and those guys they'll send you the kit for free and then you'll pay for the oil analysis uh, when they get it and they do it um, so that's the difference between the two this one you pay for whether you use it or not so you might as well send it back in um, the next oil analysis I'll do, which will actually be on, on the oil in here, 
I'm going to aim for another thousand mile run, give or take, we'll see. Uh, and for the last one, I say the last one, um, I'm going to do both oil analyzers. I'm going to do both oil analyzers and the Blackstone. I'm going to send them both in to see if there's any differences. I don't think there will be. Uh, they're both pretty reputable, 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 reputable. This is why I'm not a TV anchor. Reputable companies. Um, and so anyway, so when this sample comes back, we'll definitely put it up and compare it to all the other ones just to see if changing your oil short has any effect on anything. I have a feeling it's going to be exactly the same. It's going to have gas in it, but no wear indicators. So there won't be any aluminum or iron or, or mag magnesium or whatever. The oil will be super clean other than the gasoline. So that's it. And one more time, you guys, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I really appreciate you guys watching me change my oil. <laughs> oh, that's crazy.